In this lesson, we want to review the product and power rules for exponents. We also want to review having an exponent of zero. So this is something that you probably already know. You're probably very familiar with exponents and the rules of exponents. But again, to be successful in this course, and specifically to be successful in the next section where we review polynomials, we need to really understand how to work with exponents. So let's start out by talking about the product rule for exponents. So basically when we multiply powers with like bases, we keep the base the same and we just add exponents. So if I have some real number a raised to the power of m multiplied by the same real number a raised to the power of n, this is equal to a raised to the power of m plus n. So keep the base the same, right? So a is the base in each case, so we keep it the same, and then add the exponents. You have an exponent of m plus an exponent of n. Okay, so to give you a few examples, let's just start out with two as a base, because it's pretty simple. So let's say we had two cubed multiplied by, let's say two squared. We would keep the base the same, so we would write two, and we just add the exponent. So I have an exponent of three and an exponent of two, so you could say three plus two up here. So this would be two to the fifth power. And it's pretty easy to prove this to yourself that it works. If you think about what two cubed means, it's three factors of two. If you think about what two squared means, it's two factors of two. So essentially, if I just count the number of factors I have here, it's three. And if I count the number of factors I have here, it's two. So if I add those together, I get the total number of factors that I'm gonna have. 3 plus 2 is 5, so I get 2 to the fifth power. So really, really simple, really, really easy to prove that to yourself. Now, another example could be something like, let's say, 5 to the fourth power multiplied by, let's say, 5 to the 11th power, something like that. So let's say this is equal to the base 5 stays the same, and we just add the exponents. 4 plus 11 is 15, so this would be 5 to the 15th power. This also works with variables. If we have something like x times y to the third power, and let's say we multiply this by x squared y to the fourth power, we would keep the base the same. So we think about x and y separately for right now. So x times x squared would be x, keep the base the same. This has an implied exponent of one. So anytime you see something hanging out by itself with no visible exponent, it has an implied exponent of one. So this would be x raised to the power of one, the exponent here, plus two, the exponent there, right? So one plus two. And then for y, we have y cubed and we have y to the fourth power. So we'd have y raised to the power of three plus four. So this would be equal to x raised to the power of 1 plus 2, which is 3. So we have x cubed times y raised to the power of 3 plus 4, which is 7. So x cubed y to the 7th. And we can mix this up and have some numbers and variables involved. So let's say we had 2 squared x to the 5th power multiplied by, let's say, 2 to the 4th power x cubed and then just y. So what will we do here? So if we think about two, two squared times two to the fourth power would be two raised to the power of two plus four. So this would be two to the sixth power. If we think about x, we'd have x to the fifth and x cubed. So if we multiply those together, x stays the same, you add five and three, that's eight. And then the y here, I don't really have anything that I can combine here, so I just write y. So this would simplify to two to the sixth power, x to the eighth power, y, right? And of course, I can put a visible multiplication symbol there. But again, when we're working with algebra, when we're putting things next to each other, so if I put a two next to an x, next to a y, next to a z, all those things are multiplied together. So putting a number next to a variable implies multiplication, okay? But if it makes you feel more comfortable, it is completely valid to put a multiplication symbol there if you would like, okay? Now, some teachers might actually ask you, if you have a number raised to a power, to evaluate that. So what is two to the sixth power? We know that's 64. So we can really write this as 64 x to the eighth power y. All right, so let's talk about the power to power rule now. And this is another rule that's gonna come up quite often. So let's say we had some real number a and it's raised to the power of m. So we already have something going on here with an exponent. 
Now I'm going to take this guy and we're going to raise it to the power of n. So with this guy, we're going to keep the base a the same and we're going to multiply the exponents m times n. So to give you an easy example, suppose we had 2 squared and this guy was raised to the third power or cubed. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep 2 the same, and I'm going to multiply 2 times 3 and get 6. And we know that's 64. We don't need to write that, but we'll just keep it as 2 to the 6th power. Now, how can I prove this to myself? Well, if I cube something, it means I have 3 of them, right? So I could really say 2 squared cubed is 2 squared times 2 squared times 2 squared, which is what? Using the product rule for exponents, Keep the base the same, add the exponents, I would get 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is 6, right? So it's the same either way, right? Either using this method or this method. This is just really a shortcut, a way to kind of get the answer in a quicker fashion. So let's think about another example. So let's suppose we had something like 8 to the 4th power raised to the 7th power. So I would keep the base 8 the same. And I would multiply 4 times 7 and get 28. So that would be 8 to the 28th power. Again, we can involve variables here. Let's suppose I had x squared and y to the 4th power. And this guy was raised to the 5th power. What would I do here? Well, I would raise each one of these individually to the 5th power. So x squared raised to the 5th power, x would stay the same. I would multiply exponents. 2 times 5 would give me 10. Then for the y to the fourth power part, y stays the same. Multiply the exponents, 4 times 5 is 20. So we get x to the 10th power, y to the 20th power. All right, the next rule is product to a power rule. So this will help when simplifying. Essentially, this rule tells us that if I'm multiplying here, if I have a product, a times b is a product. If I'm raising this to a power, what I can do is I can say this is equal to each factor raised to that power. So AB raised to the power of M is equal to A to the power of M times B to the power of M. So as an example, let's just keep using two. So let's say we had two times three raised to the second power. What this is saying is that it's equal to two squared. So that's one factor squared times the other factor squared. And you can prove this to yourself. Two times three is six. So six squared would be 36. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. We know 4 times 9 is 36, so it's the same either way. You might say, well, why would you want to go through and do this? There's going to be situations where you might need to do that in order to simplify, or it might make it easier to solve something. You just you need to know all the rules so that when you get in the situation, you can manipulate things and get the answer that you're looking for. All right, let's take a look at another example of this. Let's suppose we had 4 squared x to the fourth power y cubed. And this guy is going to be raised to the third power. So we could simplify this by raising each power here, using the power of power rule, each power to the power. And we're going to do it individually, right? So we're going to take each factor and raise it to the power. So 4 squared cubed is 4 raised to the power of 2 times 3 or 6. Then times, we'd have x to the fourth power raised to the third power. So this is x raised to the power of 4 times 3 or 12. Then we have y raised to the power of 3 raised to the power of 3. So y cubed cubed. So y stays the same, multiply the exponents, 3 times 3 is 9. So this is one way that you might want to simplify. Again, you see something like this, you can remove the parentheses and write it as 4 to the 6th power, x to the 12th power, y to the 9th power. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the quotient to a power rule. So this is similar to what we just saw. Essentially, if I have a quotient, so a over b, or a divided by b, this is raised to the power of m, I can say this is equal to a raised to the power of m over b raised to the power of m. So if you think about this as a division problem, your dividend would be raised to the power of m, and your divisor would be raised to the power of m. If you think about it as a fraction, your numerator is raised to the power of m over your denominator, which raises to the power of m. However you want to think about that. And as an example, let's suppose we had something like 15 over 3, and this guy squared. Well, what I can do here is I can raise 15 to the power of 2 over, I can raise 3 to the power of 2, and this should be the same either way. If we divide 15 by 3, we know we get 5. 5 squared is 25. If I did 15 squared, that's 225. If I did 3 squared, that's 9. 
225 divided by 9 is also 25, right? So it's the same thing either way. In this particular case, it would be a lot simpler to deal with this, right? Because you're taking a smaller number and squaring it. Here you're squaring and you're squaring, then you have to do an extra division problem. So again, if I saw something like this, I'd probably want to put it in this form to simplify because it's quicker, right? Especially if you don't have a calculator. But again, you can go back and forth because of the equality. So whatever is easier for you. So to look at another example of this, let's suppose we had something like 1,000. And this is over 25. And this is raised to the fourth power. Now, 1,000 divided by 25 is going to give us 40. So this would be 40 to the fourth power. But again, if you wanted to do this in another way, you could say this is 1,000 to the fourth power over 25 to the fourth power. Okay, it's the same either way. So lastly, let's talk about an exponent of zero. So the power of zero, we have a, some real number, raised to the power of zero is equal to one, and we have a is not equal to zero. Okay, so let's, let's think about this. A lot of you know where this comes from, but in case you don't, I'm just gonna show you a quick pattern, and then it should make sense. So we start with the number two. Two is an easy number to work with. If I have two cubed, we know this is eight. If I have two squared, we know this is what? It's four. So notice how if I go from eight to four, I divide by two. So I divide by two when I reduce the exponent by one. If I increase the exponent by one, I multiply by two. So four times two would get me back to eight. If I go down to two to the first power, I can take four and divide by two, that gives me two. So again, I'm dividing by two. So following that same pattern, if I want two to the power of zero, then I would take two and divide it by two and I would get one, right? It's just, we can teach this with a pattern. And we'll talk about negative exponents later, but most of you know that if I had two to the power of negative one, I would divide one by two and I would get one half, right? You just keep dividing by two. And again, it works the same way. If I go up, I can multiply by two. So one half times two is one. If I go up, one times two is two. If I go up, two times two is four. If I go up, four times two is eight. Again, coming back down, you're dividing by two. Going up, you're multiplying by two. So this works for any real number. So if you take some real number and you raise it to the power of zero, it's equal to one. And that's because you're dividing the number by itself. This is why we can't have zero raised to the power of zero because you would end up by definition with zero over zero, which is undefined. Okay, we can't divide by zero. So let's think about an example. So we know any number raised to the power of zero other than zero is one. So if I had 155 raised to the power of zero, this would be one. If I had negative 212 raised to the power of zero, notice how this is in parentheses, this is equal to one. If I had negative eight without the negative inside of parentheses raised to the power of zero, this is negative one, right? Because you have eight to the power of zero, which is one, and you want the negative of that, that's how you get negative one there. So kind of a trap question with this, let's say you had something like 215x squared y cubed z, and this guy is raised to the power of zero. Do I need to go through and use the power to power rule here? No, everything inside of here is gonna be raised to the power of zero, and everything inside of there is gonna be one. So the result of raising something to the power of zero is one, one times itself is always one. So you can just stop. You don't need to go through here the long way. This is just one, okay? Doing this the slow way, 215 is really 215 raised to the power of one. If I use the power to power rule here, one times zero is just zero. So this becomes a zero here. X squared raised to the power of zero is X to the power of zero. Y cubed raised to the power of zero is Y to the power of zero. Z to the first power raised to the power of zero is gonna be Z to the power of zero. So all of these here are gonna equal one, right? This is gonna be one times one times one times one, which is just one. So if you see something like this, save yourself the time and just write one. All right, so to kind of wrap up the lesson, let's think about something like this. So let's say we had two X to the fifth power, and this is squared, and then this is over. Let's say we had three X, Y, Z. This is raised to the power of zero this is multiplied by, we would have three squared, and this is times y squared, and this is raised to the power of four. 
Okay, so what can we do here? So in my numerator, I would use my power to power rule. Two basically to the first power, raised to the power of two, keep two the same, multiply the exponents. One times two is two, so this is two squared. Then x to the fifth power squared, keep x the same, multiply exponents, five times two is 10. In the denominator, again, if you see something like this, this is a typical trap question. You think about this as just one, right? Three x, y, z, this is all raised to the power of zero. This is going to be one. Then times, this guy right here, three squared, y squared raised to the power of four, keep three the same, multiply the exponents. Two times four is eight, so this would be three to the eighth power. Y squared to the fourth power, keep Y the same, multiply the exponents, two times four is eight. So this would give me as a final answer, we would have two squared, which you could write as four if you want, X to the 10th power over three to the eighth power, Y to the eighth power. Now, if you wanted to, you could write three Y inside of parentheses like this, raised to the eighth power, okay? You could do that. But to make it simpler, I'd rather put it like this. We have three to the eighth power, y to the eighth power. Again, you could write that either way you want. It means the same thing, but I like this answer a little bit better. So two squared x to the 10th power over three to the eighth power, y to the eighth power.